G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday evening here in Australia, market's down again ever so slightly, not too much, but we are definitely hovering down at this lower $2 trillion mark. So, you know, we've been up to, again, $3 trillion, got down to $2.3 trillion, $2.2 trillion, went up to two point seven, came back down to two point three. now we're, we're up at two point five the other day, now we're down at two point four. So the general trend, though, is we're still going down. And so that's what I want to remind people of. I don't think we've, uh, I think we may have seen the worst of it. I don't think we're going to go down as far as that wick went. But I think we are definitely going, well, I can't say definitely. It's never financial advice for a start. But I just think we're going down. I think we're going to go down a little bit for a while. But it's not all bad news. And I'll get into that shortly. But let's just have a look at the market. So we're down just under a percent, 2.41 trillion. BTC dominance still, you know, kind of around that kind of 40% mark, dips a little bit lower, goes a little bit higher. Not a lot of volume at the moment. BTC price, it got up around 51,000 ish, and now it's back down to 50,000. And gas prices, I mean, it's the cheapest we've seen because there's still a lot of fear in the market. People aren't sure what to do. But some coins are still doing all right. They have small pumps. Some have really big pumps and others aren't doing so well. So what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Because that's what I like to focus on. I mean, there we go. Tezos, 30%. BitTorrent up again. It was 30-something, 30 39% yesterday, I think. 15% today. EOS, MobileCoin, Chainlink, Near Protocol. Look, there's definitely some gains there. And some coins that, you know, I don't know if they really deserve the gains. And that's what has me worried. I think this is... Uh, again, I think there's a lot of market manipulation going on at the moment. It's trying to get people bullish on coins that... You know, again, EOS, why is EOS pumping? I've got no idea other than it was probably at a low from that dump. And, you know, even whales know that, you know, semi-dead chains will Steve still even have a pump if you can pick them up at cheap prices and the whole market starts to pump. So other than that, I, I haven't heard anything about EOS and I don't know why else they uh, would be, not the 12% pumping, but, you know, have gone up. Chainlink, it's good to see it making a move. It's been quiet for a while. Immutable X. So look, some double digit gains there and some nice high single digit gains but we need to remember the overall market is down by a percent so what hasn't fared so well there we can see cadena cadena i think is how you say it cadena 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 i'm pretty sure is what it is but you know correct me in the comments if i'm wrong uh it pumped really hard so of course it's going to have a pullback you know all of these coins, exactly the same thing. They had massive pumps, so now they're coming down. And Solana is almost at the price that I bought in at. So, uh, I mean, I'm still happy to buy Solana. Again, I'm sort of scaling into it. If it, you know, goes down, then so be it. But it's got a lot going behind it, and I had to get a position in it. And so if I can buy it at my kind of, you know, average buy-in price or cheaper, then I'm fine with that. Again, I don't think we're in a bear market, but I think we're going to go down uh, some more. Basic attention taken. No real bad sort of, you know, corrections, you know, whatever you want to call them. 12.7% for Kadena. And if you've been in Kadena for more than sort of a month or two, you, you're well up anyway. So, you know, loss has always hurt. Gala, I mean, <laughs> Gala, that's really hurt me. And I'm not knocking Gala. I was just unfortunate. I literally was one of those people that bought at the absolute top, like 78 uh, cents, I think it was. It may have gone like, you know, point zero zero something higher, but I basically bought at the top. But again, I didn't put that much money into it. I still like what Gala is all about and I'll still look to buy in. It's about 50% cheaper than sort of where I bought in. So, you know, I can lower my average buy-in cost by continuing to uh, scale into it. And that's what I do plan on doing unless I hear some really bad news about Gala and I haven't heard anything like that. But again, the losses aren't so bad. The really bad losses have kind of generally already come, but I do think they're going to continue and I'll get on to why. So let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So again, this is where we are. We have set in another lower high. And that's what makes me think we're going to go lower. So here's the boxes I was looking for, the ranges, and we wicked into there. I don't know if we're going to come down here, but I do think we're going to get pretty close. I don't think we're going to come down to 36,000, but it's definitely possible because there is a CME gap actually down here at around kind of 34. It's about 34 to 33 and a half. So I am not going to be surprised if we don't get dragged down to there. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. But I definitely have it in the back of my mind. I don't think we're going into a bear market, so I'm not panic selling anything. 
Uh, I've been in the game long enough to know. I'll just simply, you know, hold. I can handle if it takes me another three, four years to be in profit. I won't be putting much money into the market if it just continues to dip and dip and dip other than really sort of Bitcoin. I'll be putting a little bit in it because I always like to buy it cheap, but I will be having most of my money in cash just sitting on the side waiting for when I feel a bottom is. But again, I don't think that's what's going to happen, but I'm definitely not counting that out. That CME gap down here just seems uh, extremely likely, likely because one CME gap got covered here. But then the scary thing is if we cover this CME gap at sort of 34,000, there's another one down at around about 22,000. And then that would mean that was the cycle top. We had a double top and, you know, none of us really picked it. But again, I don't think that is what's going to happen. And here's why. Bitcoin Wales bought almost 3.5 billion or 67,000 Bitcoin during the crash down to 42,000. So Bitcoin whales, not just random Bitcoin people, whales who've been around for a while and have a lot of Bitcoin, they're still buying. That's what makes me think this was more orchestrated than anything. Again, there's, it's the leverage. That's the real big problem. We won't have these massive crashes if we don't have the leverage. And that's just the fact of it because it's the leverage that gets wiped out. That's you know where the big money is. So many people, even right now, probably... People are thinking, this is it, and so they're going long again. And if there's too many people going long, guess what they will do? Even these whales who bought the Bitcoin for, you know, it got down to 42K, but not too many people would have bought Bitcoin at 42K. They're probably still buying it now at about 50K, but they'll still short it and sell because they'll set a whole lot of buy orders lower, and they will also, you know, dump the price on 3, 5x, 10x, 20x leverage. I don't know what they're going to do. So they'll actually make money. They don't mind dumping it if they can short it and liquidate everyone's longs. That is really why a majority of these dumps happen is too many people get on the leverage and want to go long. I don't know what else to tell you. I've never done any leverage trading. I don't know if I ever will. Sometimes I think about it, but most of the time when I see things like this, I'm just like, why would you? I'd rather just buy the dips. If something is 30 plus percent uh, off its old all-time high, 20% even really, depending on sort of where the market is, I'm happy to buy it, particularly Bitcoin. From now on, if it is 30 to 50% off its old all-time high, I'm buying. I won't say I'm aggressively buying, definitely 50% onwards I'm aggressively buying, but it depends if we have a blow off top. If we don't have any kind of crazy blow off top, then really I'm just happy to buy Bitcoin anytime it's 15 to 20% under its old all-time high. Doesn't mean I'm not buying when it's at all-time highs, I'm just buying a lot less of it because that means we are in you know, basically a bull run and you're better off really focusing on some good altcoins until Bitcoin slows down, has a stop, then your altcoins are going to pump and then you can take some of those profits and again, tr wait to buy back into Bitcoin next time it's on its dip. Now again, that's not financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor. I have no background in it, but I know that's what a lot of smart people do and that's exactly what I try and do. I like to buy Bitcoin when it's, I like to buy anything when it's cheap. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Well, good stuff, not shit stuff and I'm going to be straight up I've bought some shit stuff in my time like I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but I do like to follow projects and the good ones I don't mind buying them when they're down and when they're way down because that is when the exponential gains will come a lot of the DeFi projects at the moment they're getting very little love it's all gaming and all the rest of it hence why I'll put a little bit of money into the metaverse and gaming that is going to die off I can tell you right now now, not die off forever, but it'll just get quiet for a while because it'll have, you know, it, it'll reached its peak hype and it may be there now. And it's when it dies off and it's quiet, that's when I'm going to be buying up lots more metaverse tokens and things like that when people aren't interested in, in them anymore. Because then when it comes back around time for them to pump, I don't want to be chasing pumps. I want to be buying the things that people aren't interested in at the moment. Knowing that they're still good projects, do your research. Again, like Aave, it's way down at the moment and it's really quiet and there's not a lot of information, not a lot of kind of hypey stuff around it and DeFi in general. So I'm focusing, not focusing, but I'm definitely looking more at DeFi at the moment because it's quiet 
and I'd rather st- stack up on that, wait for the metaverse to be super quiet, then stack up on that because eventually it's all cyclical. Everything comes round. And when it does come round, I will have loaded up on whatever it was that was quiet at the time. And that doesn't mean I'm always going to be exactly right. Like I'll load up on DeFi because that'll be the next thing to pump. No, DeFi could be three things away from still pumping. But once it finally does, the good projects will always rise to the top. They always do. All right, moving on. Now, again, being Australian, I'm so happy where Australia is going with the crypto at the moment. So as I said, you know, the amount of crypto adoption in Australia is booming, particularly with women. We've got 50% uh, more women in crypto in Australia. So that is great. Congratulations to the women in Australia, you know, getting on the front foot, becoming ed- educated uh, in finances. Because like I said, you only have to go back like 30 or 50 years and women in finance there wasn't many of them it's not to say there was none of them so it's good that things have changed and they are you know they're getting getting in and getting dirty that's why i like to say it you know getting wrecked unfortunately that's all part of learning but you know just getting in there and becoming involved we, we want everyone involved you know anything that's you know dominated by one gender is never going to be the best it can be we need all genders and all parts of society and so good anyway moving back on so the australian government has given its nod to six world leading crypto reforms so this has been coming andrew bragg's been talking about it uh and he's the one who really got me onto it so i'll read in this article so what is clear is that if we embrace these developments australia has enormous opportunity to capitalize on the convergence between finance and technology because that's what's happening right now that is what crypto is The government is in favour of six out of nine reforms proposed by the Senate committee, including a licensing regime for crypto exchanges, laws to govern decentralised autonomous organisations or DAOs, and a common access regime for new payment platforms. Concerning CBDCs, this is what I found super interesting. An unnamed senior government source told The Australian on December 7th, so The Australian's a, a news outlet here, that a retail scale RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia, backed Bitcoin or cryptocurrency is currently being considered and will be a key element of the government's regulatory reform on digital payments. I think this is brilliant. Australia need to have Bitcoin as a reserve. Our banks need to have Bitcoin as a reserve. That will help uh, you know, our in- currency. Like I said, I've said this a few times. The dollar will survive if it's backed by things like cryptocurrencies. The dollar just being randomly printed, though, that is inflationary. That, that's going to kill us every time. But if people keep buying more crypto, then you've got more and more things to back up other dollars to print more dollars. It's hard to explain, but the problem is at the moment, you know, the dollar all around the world, it's not just the American dollar, even the Australian dollar, they're just printing more to save themselves. But it's not backed by anything. Nothing else is going up. But if everyone's buying cryptocurrencies and your dollar is now backed by Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, that allows you to print more dollars. That is how the dollar gets saved by Bitcoin, Ethereum, and you know all things like that. In my personal opinion, again, never financial advice. And I think that is how the dollar survives. Now, it won't survive forever, unfortunately. Uh, it, it just it can't compete with you know cryptocurrencies. But what it can be is a method of payment. Now, again, there's... There's avenues being formed out there for Bitcoin to be a form of payment and things like that, but it's a store of value. That's what people want to do to it with it. They want to buy it and hold on to it. They don't want to go to the shops and spend it. I'm not saying people will never do that, but that's where I think the dollar plays its part. Again, every country's dollar, rupee, you know, whatever country you're in and whatever your local currency is, they will be saved buy things like bitcoin and you know possibly ethereum and solana whatever you know whatever cryptocurrencies are out there because they are limited their price will naturally continue to go up if more and more people buy them and if governments have those as reserve backing their reserve currencies the more people buy them then they can print more money because the value of those are going up and that stops just the rampant inflation that's going on now that is my personal opinion you know you need to make up your own mind that's where I'm at. Now, this is what I liked as well. The world is watching Australia, which is now setting the global standard for crypto payments and digital wallet reform. As I said, it's not just Australia. Other countries are doing this as well. Once they regulate these industries and things like that, other countries around the world 
will most likely adopt very similar. Some countries will just straight out adopt the, the same policies and if not adopt them, make very similar ones or completely get rid of them if they don't like them. So we still have to wait and see what happens. But if Australia has really good regulatory uh, crypto regulations, other countries will follow suit. They'll look at it and go, yep, we really like that. We're going to basically, again, either completely adopt it or just write something very similar or maybe even write something better. And then Australia can look at what other countries done have done and gone, you know what, we like that as well. We're going to adopt or make something similar. And that is how we really push cryptocurrency worldwide. People really fear regulation. I don't fear regulation. I fear over-regulation. That is what worries me, but not regulation. Regulation will again get rid of all the bad players, the rug pulls and things like that. We can't just have a, a you know rampant crypto industry where anyone can make a coin and you know steal everyone's money and there's very little that happens to them. We need processes in place that people can still make cryptocurrencies, but there has to be a way to do it and there has to be protections for all the people uh, getting involved. Now there's never one hundred percent protection. That's just impossible. Businesses, including cryptos, will. You know, fail. That's just the way it is. There's over 10,000. They're not all going to last. But we definitely need regulation to make it go wide stream and usher in, again, the new convergence between finance and technology. I love that. And I'm glad Australia is at the forefront. Obviously, being an Australian, a uh, very proud moment. But I still need to wait and see exactly what these, uh, you know, regulations are and whether they're going to be good uh, in the long run or a I wouldn't be surprised if some uh, sort of hamper things in some ways, they're always going to. But if it's for the greater good, as they say, then, you know, you have to accept that. It's not all just going to be, you know, peaches and roses. You know, There's going to be some things there that, you know, people aren't particularly going to like. But again, if it helps us in the long run, then so be it. Now, last but not least, VCs in talks to invest 50 to $100 million in Polygon. Polygon has so many things coming out. I think they have a conference in the next few days. Vitalik is uh, about to speak. Uh, not about to speak. He's going to speak at it. There's talk that I think Uniswap put it to a vote that they would merge onto Polygon, and I think it passed. I'm not 100% sure. That's just something I heard. I haven't been able to qualify that yet. But again, so many team, uh, so many projects and dApps and you name it have got on Polygon. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to do really well particularly in the long run. Now, again, never financial advice. We'll have to wait and see. But, you know, even if you get in now, it's not to say the price can't, you know, drop 50, 70, 80% from where it is. Long term, though, they just have so much going for them and so much momentum behind them. Yeah, I'm happy to continue to invest in Polygon. Uh, it's one of my best investments. And, you know, hopefully in five or 10 years time, I can sit back and say, well, that was my best investment because it's right up there at the moment. It's that and ADA have really probably been my two best investments. You know, I don't like to say I was lucky, but I got into them at a really good time and they've really paid off. Even though ADA's dumped a whole lot, I got no doubt ADA is going to do well. Sunday Swap comes out, uh, they get all the bugs sort of sorted. Not that there's a whole lot of bugs, but, you know, get everything sorted. ADA is going to be fine. I think Polygon's going to be fine. I think Ethereum's going to be fine. I think Bitcoin's going to be fine. And then there's a number of other projects out there that I think will do extremely well as well. And the sad fact is I'm not invested in all of them. You know, you got to pick and choose, but you only need a couple of really good winners and they'll make up for the losses. But just be smart about it. Do your research. Don't just dump all your money in at one time. Because if you're in a bear market, then you've dumped in at some random price and then you can't ever fix up that price. Scale in, no matter if the price is going down or if the price is going up. That way you can alleviate, again, just yeah, getting in at the worst time. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Be careful. I think there's going to be some more downside. I hope I'm wrong, but I just get the feeling we're probably going to go down all through this week. It'll be up and down, but generally working our way down. And I think maybe around that, again, $42,000 level is somewhere where we might get close to, but I hope that's not true. All right. I'll see you next time.